Today's guest is known for her hosting on shows like Wide World of Sports and Entertainment Tonight. Julie Moran has a beautiful God story. We'll hear some wonderful details of the story of Julie Moran here today on Babby's House. Stay tuned. Babby's House is coming to you right now. And welcome, welcome to Babby's house, where everybody is a member of the family. That's what we love to say around here. So happy that you've joined us for today's show. Julie Moran is my very special guest today. And you probably recognize her name and her face because you've probably seen her on Wide World of Sports and Entertainment Tonight and a lot of other uh, wonderful shows on television. But did you know that Julie Moran has a God story and that she is turned on to Jesus and she is amazed by what he is doing in her life. Will you help me to welcome to Babby's house, Julie Moran. Julie, I'm so happy to see you, my I friend. I am so <laughs> glad to be here so happy and to be have with you, you today. I just love this show. You know, Julie, when we see you on television, we see you hosting some of our favorite television shows. Like we're, we're avid sports fans in our house, and so we've seen you on Wide World of Sports. We've seen you on Entertainment Tonight. But, you know, we, it's so cool to know that people that we see on television are strong believers. They love the Lord. They have a God story. So tell me a little bit about, you know, stars from TV and film. How do you juggle? Made husband? it anywhere without the Lord being by my side. You yes. know, I, I, I claim that verse from Proverbs, trust in the Lord with mm -hmm. all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Yes. And he directed me right out of Thomasville, Georgia. Mm. To um, to a career in sports and entertainment and and um, you know I've just I've looked to him my whole life to just kind of guide lead and direct me so um, I would be nowhere without you know my how faith. Did you, how did you come to know the Lord? You know I grew up in a Christian family and I went to church and I I, I thank my parents for taking me to church. You know sometimes when I didn't want to go. Remember yes. those days of when course. we were kids? Mama made you get up. Mama and go. made you get up and go to <laughs> church and. Um, I, I do know, though, that at some point, it was about 16, that I realized that just going to church, just going to Sunday school, I didn't really have a relationship with Christ. And I began to question, you know, what does it mean to really know Jesus? Mm. And that's when I ended up at a retreat and someone said, come forward. And I just felt led to go forward. And I met the Lord on my own. Mm -hmm. You know, not what, what mama said, not what grandmama said, but but. I met Jesus on my own and from then on I began to really have a relationship with him um, outside of church, you know, in my bedroom um, on those hard nights when you're a senior in high school and you're thinking, well, what am I going to do with my life? And, and I began to talk to him like a friend and, and that's been my relationship with him from that time forth is that I feel like um, he's my Lord, he's my Savior, yes. but he's my friend, he's somebody I can talk to Yes. and um, that's the kind of relationship. I've, I've had with with Christ That's my, amen. my, my, That's my a life. That's story. You know, the Bible tells us that God has given to every man the measure of a gift. When did you discover that you had this ability to to interview and to host um, and be on television. When did that happen? You know, it's so funny. I, I was really young, and I, my grandfather was a football coach at the University of Georgia, and he was the offensive coordinator, and I used to beg him to go to football practice with him from like four or five years old, and I would bring a tape recorder because I wanted a tape recorder for Christmas. And nobody remembers what a tape recorder is, but, uh, you know. Yeah, we do. You do. <laughs> Gabby, you know. And um, we would get home after practice and I would interview him wow. and we still have some of those audio recordings and so from an early age I just felt inquisitive I felt like I wanted to know and he was kind of my idol so I, I, I just from an early age I felt 
really compelled to be interested in people and what they're doing. And I just started making these little radio shows. I, I remember putting my brother on. I remember reading books on tape. It was just something, this gift came early for me. I just kind of knew it early on. Do you see how, you know, God gave you this, this gift of being in, inquisitive, just being curious? Yes. And then a, and a grandfather who had, um, you know, being a, a football coach, uh, of a winning team. He, he had the kind of personality that was interesting. And there was this beautiful marriage of the desire and the ability that came together, came together, came together at a very early age. I just see how God just kind of puts the puzzle pieces together, even in your childhood. Yes. So in your childhood, who were some of those people on television that you know, kind of lit the spark or became a uh, inspiration to you? Well, you know, it's interesting. When I was growing up, there were no female sportscasters. There were two. There was Phyllis George and there was a gal named Gail Gardner on ESPN. And everyone says, why did you go into sports? There weren't a lot of role models for me growing up, but I remember watching these two women and being enthralled with the fact that they were in a man's world mm -hmm. talking about, you know, back then we weren't really covering women's sports. And, and I just began to watch them and I, and I just said, you know what, I want to do that. I think I can do that. And, um, and that was my grandfather again. And he said, you can do it. Yes. And, um, and that was the inspiration. But back in the day, there, was, there weren't a lot of role models for women. And now we look on the sidelines, sure. we look in the booth, we in look the in the locker room. I mean, we're, we, we, we're they're everywhere. everywhere. Yes. Although I never went in the men's locker room, Babby. I just didn't think you needed to. Yes. And I think, you know, that's kind of come back around. You don't see, you know, much of that locker room chatter going on anymore. But, um, but it was, um, back in the day, that was, you know, something that you had to decide whether, you know, am I going to go in or go out? I never went in the locker room, but there was never an athlete from Charles Barkley to Michael Jordan to whoever I interviewed that didn't come outside and give me the big story I wanted without me feeling like I needed to invade their space as men yes. going in the locker room. And I was an athlete. I didn't... I didn't want men in my locker room. So anyway, this is a that was a you know hot button issue back in the day. Sure. But I, I, I felt like um, you know, I got a lot of guidance from those two ladies. You've met some very interesting people and you just named a, a few of them. You know, all of their faces and their names we recognize. Um, can you give can you share a highlight uh, you know, of, of meeting somebody or learning something or some light bulb moment. Give us, you know, just a there little scoop. There have been scoop. so many. I tell you, on Entertainment Tonight, the show's on, you know, every day and full of stars. But uh, there's so many moments. I remember when I interviewed Oprah and I, I walked into the room. Actually, she walked into the to the room and I felt like the molecular energy changed in the room. Like she had such a presence when she came in. And I remember interviewing her and her giving me a really big scoop, you know, and, and how cool that felt. She, she had decided to not have children and to freeze some eggs in case she ever wanted to. And this was a big story back then. And I just remember her being so candid and open and, and, um, but I remember her being a highlight and, and there's so many, so many others. I mean, you could pretty much ask me anybody and I could say, oh yeah, I can tell you that story, you know? Wow. Because every day it was a big star, another big star. What and is that like, you know, meeting people who we know by their first names? What is that like meeting these kinds of people? You know, Babby, you've, you've interviewed people and people are just people. Yes. You know, the flaws and all, yes. the good and all, the bad and all. And, and I didn't find celebrities to be really any different. Everybody's just got a personal story. And when you sit down like this and you just talk, you know, I don't find there to be any great divide. I, I found people to be nicer than I thought, more normal than I thought. Um, I, th there are, I think Hollywood gets a bad rap. I think there are a lot of really fine and wonderful people in the entertainment business. And um, same is true of sports. You know, some of the greats, I mean, I learned so much just, just talking to, you know, athletes over the years or Olympic athletes and sure. training and what they go through or NBA players or Michael Jordan and, you know, him talking about being cut from his ninth grade basketball team. 
and how that made him a better player and a stronger person. And, and I think people can relate to those stories, you know, and I think as you and I are here, as we're going to bring those stories out and let them share it with the world, that feels fun, doesn't it? It's, it, it's, it's, it's life changing. Yeah. If there's a young person that's watching today that has a dream of doing what you do, they stand in front of the mirror with their hairbrush, they, they interview just like you, their, their dad or their mom or their sister or their teacher, what advice could you give them? Well, I'll tell you, practice, practice, practice. You know, try to get an internship at a local station. Get yourself in the right environment. Um, do everything you can to, you know, advance your career. I was a journalism major. You know, today in college, you can get so much. Most colleges have, you know, on-air stations where you can, you know, practice, where you can be on camera. And also, you know, there's that verse in Isaiah, and it just came to me, um, 30, 21. It says, whether I turn to the right or the left, I will hear a voice behind me and, it, and he will say, this is the way, walk mm -hmm. in it. And sometimes I felt like I turned to the right and the Lord was wanting to turn me to the left. And sometimes if I just listened, you know, he'd, he'd, he'd pull me back into the way I should go. And I think, you know, any career, you, I think you just have to get out there and get going. And sometimes you make the wrong turn, but if you love the Lord and if you're living by faith, he'll turn you back around and send you in the right direction. You know, as a believer in, um, in, a, in a public um, persona, in a public broadcasting on television every day, not just Christian television, but I'm talking about network television right. as a believer, um, how can we pray for people that, people that like you, that we know are believers, but you're in a secular environment. You, I don't know what kind of opposition that you might come up against, but give us a little insight on what that might be like. Oh, I think people, you know, believers in any industry, but especially in the entertainment industry, need prayer because there's so much temptation out there. There's also so much of, there's so much. Everybody has so much, mm -hmm. you know, Excess. wanting to keep up with the Joneses mm -hmm. or feeling like, you know, I need to, you know, fit in to that environment and I think you know I needed prayer for the Lord to just keep me centered and let me know that I was enough you know mm -hmm. I was enough I did not have to be Julia Roberts I did not have to be Oprah Winfrey I just had to be me and that was enough and that he had put me in a place where I could shine and I didn't have to be that big or that big but just to keep me grounded and I think that's how we can pray for anybody that's um, got a big job even like you that, that the Lord would just keep you grounded keep you in his light keep you faithful keep you humble amen you know amen I want to talk a little bit more about the the struggle with just being yourself with just being your real being happy at peace with your real authentic self because you're right it is easy to look at someone and say well if I could be a little bit more like her or if I maybe had a little bit more of this or a little bit more of that I could be whatever yeah. you know the the enemy has this way of of feeding us the lie that we're never enough we're not good enough we're not pretty enough we're not smart enough we're not rich enough or thin enough or whatever that is can you just share maybe a little bit of your own story, maybe a, if there was ever a struggle with that, you just kind of Abs open the door a little absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Talk to us a little bit you, more about that. You come from a teeny tiny Thomasville, Georgia, and eventually end up on that stage somehow through hard work and grace and goodness on Entertainment Tonight. And I think a lot of times I was insecure. You know, um, was I thin enough? Um, did my body look good enough? You know, did uh, did I have enough? You know, was the hair good? I mean, we we look at the physical so much when we're on television, and I think we can be distracted by that, and it can also tear you apart if you judge yourself based on the physical. And I did a little bit of that in the beginning, you know, um, and I had to come to a point where I was able to say. This is what God gave me. This is the body God gave me. It's good enough. It is beautiful in His sight. And maybe I'm not the most beautiful, but I can certainly try to be the most talented and the most hardworking and to let those insecurities go and to realize that I was enough. I'm still struggling with that. You know what I mean? Of course. I think we all struggle with that, but we have to, you know, in my own personal life, 
I have to understand that this is who I am. Um, I'm good enough because Jesus is, is good enough. I'm God's favorite because Jesus is God's favorite. And God loves me just like he loves him, according to John 17, 23. Yeah. And when we understand that our identity is not in what we do or it's not in how we look, our real identity is, is not in who we are, but whose we are. Whose we are. Uh-huh. Then Amen. That, that just helps me to find my, my confidence is not in myself or in my flesh. My confidence is in the Lord who gives me the ability to do what I do. And so I do it with joy. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, I, I understand the struggle, but, you know, I also look out in the world and I see people who look just like me. Um, you know, I see people who are, are doing what I do. Everybody is not a cookie cutter carbon copy of somebody else. Yeah. And so it's just the joy in just being me yes. and just being myself. And, um, and I, I see that in you, that confidence that, that comes from the inside. That doesn't just come from how we look mm. but, and, or who we are, but whose we are. So, um, and that's what I want to pass on, yeah. you know, to my daughters, to, yeah. to young journalists, you know, if you can just be okay with who you are on the inside and not, not be judged totally by the exterior and, and to let that, let that inside come out yes. because that's where the real beauty is, is when, when you're able to let that what's inside bubble over and come out yes. and feel real and truthful and honest right. and humble and um, that's where that's where real beauty's found you know well how does Julie Moran stay centered how do you stay focused on what is real and authentic and important it's hard you know I tell you I have to um, get down on my knees I have to try to have a regular quiet time with the Lord you know, and I also rely so much on my relationship with my husband, my family. They keep me so centered. Yes. You know, and I think that um, I just thank the Lord for giving me such a good man. You know, we were able to um, be each other's um, helper. And over these past 30 years that we've been married, and we got married, he was a young actor, and I was a young um, broadcaster, and we met on this Ford car commercial. And this casting director said, um, all right, we're casting for Ford cars, you standing by the tree, and you sitting on the couch. Come here, you look good together. That's awesome. Cast That's together. That's it. I but, love it how God does that. But God put us together, and um, without Rob as my helpmate, I would really not be where I am. And Amen. I just thank the Lord for him. And, um, and they, my family keeps me grounded. Well, thanks so very much for being my guest today on Babby's House, Julie Moran. Oh, I've enjoyed Amen. it. Amen. And we wish you all of God's best blessings. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And to you, my dear friends that are watching today, thank you for watching Babby's House. Do me a favor and log on to Babby.com and let me know that you have seen today's show. In just a little bit, we're going to come right back with more of Babby's House. But after this break, we'll be right back with Babby's House. God bless you. We'll be right back after this. Thanks for coming back to Babby's House. I've been talking today with Julia Moran, and you recognize her name and her interviewing on Wide World of Sports and Entertainment Tonight. And uh, I'm so happy that she is here to give us a little insight on her God story and how she came to know the Lord and how she discovered this gift for broadcasting. You've interviewed some of the most interesting people in the world, people like Oprah Winfrey, uh, Michael Jordan, Charles Barkley. You've been a courtside. You've been in uh, broadcasting for how many years now? Wow. Well, it's it's going on 30. Wow. That's yeah, I started really young on ESPN with Dr. J, Julia Serving, then went mm. to NBC Sports, then ABC Sports, Wide World of Sports, and took over hosting that show when Frank Gifford retired, and wow. um, he was such a great guy, and Kathy Lee is such a great gal. How has broadcasting changed? I mean, over three decades, you know, we've seen changes in technology, uh, changes in uh, leadership, in sports, and, and, and personalities, but for you personally, how do you think broadcasting has changed you? You know what? It's made me a better person in the fact that I think, just like you, we 
re research, research, research in sports, it, it, it made me, I felt like I was, when I was in sports, I felt like I was going back to school, mm -hmm. you know, and, but I also felt like when I was at Entertainment Tonight that I was in film school. I mean, it's enriched my life in, in so many ways, sports and entertainment. But also, I think that it's taught me how to be real. You know, I think I started out maybe a little stiff, you know, maybe trying to be the sportscaster. Mm -hmm. And then I see, you know, people today, I think, on ESPN, as I watch different shows, I see people being more their real true selves, mm -hmm. you know, and they don't feel like they all have to talk the same and look the same. And nobody, everybody doesn't have to have that general American dialect. We can be Southern if we want. We sure. can. So I think, um, I think TV is, um, and sports especially, you, you can really be your real true self. And I think that's much more fun to watch than stilted. Yes. What's one of the greatest lessons you've learned about yourself that, that you've discovered over the past 30 years? That it's okay to make a mistake. Mm. You know, I made a big mistake the very first day I was on the air. Brent Musburger um, was a great guy to work with. And I'll just tell you the story. I went to the bathroom with the wireless mic on. Been there. Been there, done that, didn't cut it off. We're 30 seconds to air, Brent comes in my ear and he goes, how you doing, Tinkle Bell? <laughs> I'm like, oh my Lord, I, thank you, Lord. I, I'm, I'm gonna learn how to turn the wireless mic off and I'll never make that mistake again. <laughs> but we laugh to this day, you know, you make so many mistakes early on, but you learn from them, you grow from them. And um, I had to still go out 30 seconds and be on camera. He almost threw me with that <laughs> with that comment, but thank the Lord I pulled through that one. We, we learned that lesson one time. <laughs> it only takes one Once, time. that's it. To learn that lesson. You've, inter you've interviewed some very interesting people. Uh, you mentioned Oprah. Who, who, is, who is another one of those very interesting people that you just, when you sat down in front of them, you thought, oh my goodness, I am in front of fill in the blank. You know, I could fill in that blank with you know, Robert Redford, Leonardo DiCaprio, Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, Julia Roberts. Um, it, it just, the list goes, Robert De Niro. I mean, I just was, wow. but the one thing that was so hard was I, JFK Jr., I, I saw him at a, a Knicks game, and I had the interview set to do it with him, and mm. then the plane went down. Wow. Never got to interview him, and also I, I flew to Princess Diana's funeral. Um, mm. There were lots of sad moments in my career too where you you had to cover stories that you know were tough um, but those um, those were two of the, the the interviews I wish that I had gotten to gotten to do what's one of your greatest moments of joy in broadcasting wow I think uh, when I was asked to host the Academy Awards pre-show Wow. And I threw it to Steve Martin, who was hosting the show. Unbelievable. And, you know, to host the Academy Awards pre-show, that was on ABC. One Super Bowl, that was amazing um, to be on the sidelines of the Super Bowl. I did, um, you know, an, how many Emmys? Nine Emmys, Golden Globes, nine Oscars. But, you know, it's just those moments are, are really special. Every year they're special. You, you have children. I do. And I know you have daughters. I have but daughters. Tell, tell us about your family. Well, Maya is um, a senior, and Michaela is in the eighth grade, and they are um, good girls. They're good girls. They're athletes. They're both double sport athletes. They don't That's have awesome. much time to do anything to get out of line. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> they don't have time to be in the mall. <laughs> if they're, doing, if they're not doing their homework, they're on, a, they're on an athletic surface. If there was a lesson that you wanted them to get or, or a, a legacy that you wanted to leave them, what would it be? To trust in the Lord. You know, they're gonna, they're gonna experience a lot in their life and they're gonna make mistakes. But if you trust in the Lord, if you, if you keep strong in your faith, he'll pick you up. He's got you. Amen. He's got you. And as long as they can, and I've told them, they're very honest with me. My, my older daughter came to me the other night and she told me something and it, it was not something great. I said, you know what? You're not gonna be grounded, penalized, anything for that. You know, because you came and told me. I said, but if you do it again, <laughs> we'll talk about that, that. But they feel like they can tell me things and I appreciate that as a mom because I want to have that open line of communication and I think that they know um, that, that my faith is what's held me together through some very, very rough times. Mm -hmm. And that I think 
if I could pass that faith on to them when they're struggling, if they can just look up, know he's got them, then that's, if I can give them that gift, then I'm giving them everything. Amen. And that's, that's what's most important. It well, Julie, is. thank you for being on Babby's House oh, today, my I've friend. so enjoyed being with you. Next time, you. I want you to sing well, for the, me. The next time I will. Well, you know, just a little bit, It Is Well With My Soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. I That's for you, my voice. friend. Thank you. Thank you for thank being you. on Babby's House Love today. Love being here. Absolutely. And thank you, my dear friend. Thank you for watching Babby's House today. It's my joy to bring people like Julie Moran who can encourage your heart, to boost you in your faith, and let you know that God loves you for who you are, not for who you think you ought to be. He loves you just like you are. Listen, thank you for logging on to Babby.com today and letting me know that you've seen the show. And while you're there, check out uh, events that we have for singers and songwriters. I mentor singers and songwriters in a, an event called The Inner Circle. We always have weekend events for singers and writers just to stir up your gifts and to help you be your absolute best. Well, may you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him and He'll direct your path. God bless you and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye for now.